beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every to break every chain Sing it one more time yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus There is power in the name of Jesus Break every chain. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Tonight is a powerful time. The spirit. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Bible says that which I speak to you I declare to you in the secret place he said declare thou upon the mountain top 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 54 1 Corinthians 15 verse 54 everyone look up let's just read so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put up immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory verse 55 can we read it together one to read oh death where is your sting oh grave where is thy victory tonight we are challenging the spirit of death I will share with you what the Lord revealed to me. We are going to pray. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. It is a tragedy for a believer not to be able to read the signs of the world and see what is happening. If we lack the perception, the ability to align with what the Spirit is doing, we can cut short our lives without knowing hallelujah praise the lord oh death where is your sting no grave where is your victory 
Tonight I'm teaching very briefly on victory over the spirit of death. And then we are going to pray. We have quite some prayers to do. I don't, we are not going to stay long. But we are going to pray. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, open my eyes tonight. Open my eyes. Shila Baba Rada Balada. Open our eyes, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the responsibilities of a true apostolic ministry is not just to change people but to be able to bring territories under the obedience of the Lordship of Christ. Are you getting my point now? A true apostolic ministry has a mandate to become a voice not just to people but to speak over territories and enforce obedience to the word of God to the ways of the spirit. Let me show you something. Isaiah 42. This is what happens when any territory lacks a true apostolic voice. And I'm not just talking about people who call apostles, this apostle, that. No. I'm talking of certain people that truly have been elected by grace. When a territory lacks true apostolic voices that can be able to speak and command things to comply. 42 verse 22. Let's read 21 and 22. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of themselves snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are taken for a prey and none delivered them. For a spoil and there is no voice that proclaims restore. It says these people are captured. They are taken for a prey. And for as long as there is no voice that can challenge darkness and say restore, those people will remain in captivity. Tonight we have come to pray. We have come to speak and say restore. It says they are taken for a prey and there is none that is able to deliver them. They are taken for a spoil. You know what a spoil is? The proceeds of war. The seal of victory in a war. That every time you spoil a territory, you take the kings and their gold and their treasure. You take it back. You cut the head of the king and hang it and take it as a symbol of your victory. They are called spoils of war. And the Bible says when there are no apostolic voices in territories, when men are kept in prison houses, when they are taken for a prey, there is none that cries deliverance unto them. It says, and when they are taken for a spoil, there is none that says, restore. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Listen, before we talk about death, let me challenge you a little. Hold on. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The word of God can be trusted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not believe the word of God, you are absolutely disadvantaged in this system. Many of us want to trust the word of God but we keep asking ourselves what is the guarantee that this word will not fail me because we are used to men failing us we are used to systems failing us and as a result of that it becomes difficult especially in the face of all of the things that happen there's death everywhere unrest, insurgency and violence sicknesses and pestilence and all of these things but solomon said there is nothing that is new under the sun meaning it has happened before recession has happened before are you getting my point war and crime and killing and wickedness the reign of evil has happened before everything that happens now has happened before and the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Let me just use a few minutes to help us and strengthen our assurance about the immutability of the word of God. Can we look at that just for a few minutes? You need to trust God's word. This is the sure foundation for faith. Not just faith that has to do with just talking, talking. No, 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 no authentic Bible faith that is able to produce results. Let's look at the scripture. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We'll just rush. I'm talking about death, but as I began to prepare for this, God put it in my heart again and again that many people are beginning to have a second thought about the word of God. Especially in light of the fact that certain ills and evil seems to be prevailing unhindered hallelujah and so many people are beginning to ask themselves is the word of god really reliable can it really bail me in death can it bail me under wicked conditions i hear the chains falling first thessalonians 2 verse 13 we we'll have to be very fast. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when we received what? The word of God which he had of us. We received it not as the word of men. But as it is in truth. The word of God. Which effectually worked also in you. Not that as you that believe. We received it not, although it was taught by a man, it was taught by a minister, but we received it not just as a word of a man, we received it in truth that this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that the word of God is able to deliver, to save, to bless? Let's talk about this word of God for a few minutes. Psalm 33 verse 6. I wrote down a few scriptures to just encourage us. Can we really trust in the word of God? Can I stake my life on the word of God? How far can I go with the word of God? 
Can it stop me from dying? Can it stop me from pestilence and wickedness? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. It says the heavens were created. They were framed out of the word of God. The Bible declares in John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 that everything we see in the universe came from God. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Right? And the word was God. He said he was with God in the beginning. Verse 2. And the same was with God in the beginning. Verse 3 now. He says, and how many things? How many things? All things were made by him. That word. And without him was not anything made. That means without it, nothing can be made in your life. Without the word, all things were made by the word of God. Hebrews 11 verse 3, don't turn there. It says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but by faith we were told by the Holy Ghost that the walls were framed by the word of God. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which appear. In other words, these material things, the unit of them is the word of God. Not just atoms and molecules. Everything in the universe was framed by the word of God. Hebrews 1 verse 3, one of my most powerful scriptures about the word of God. The Bible says he upholds all things. Hebrews what? Am I right? Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of the person and upholding all things by what? By the word of his power. Watch this. It's one thing to manufacture this, but it's another thing to keep it standing. The Bible says the word of God did not just bring it into existence. The word of God is the factor that keeps it moving. He upholds everything. Everything. The sun, the moon, balancing the equilibrium of nature is all balanced by the word of his power. So he upholds your life not by circumstances that happen but by the word of his power. The Bible says all things. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Psalm 89 verse 34. Very powerful scripture. Psalm 89 verse 34. Is the word of God reliable? What is the guarantee behind the word of God? Everyone read. Want to read. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. This is God speaking. He said, my covenant, I will not break it. I will not alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Oh, hallelujah. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. My covenant will I not break. Men can do all of this, but I have, I have entered a covenant with myself because there is no man greater than me. So I entered a covenant with myself and I will not break it. I will not alter the thing that has gone forth. God will not break his word, brothers and sisters. You must be assured of this. It is the guarantee that helps us to trust the word. God cannot lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. Powerful scripture. Very, very, very powerful scripture. Numbers 23. Everyone read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? He said, God is not a man. That means it's okay when men tell lies. It's part of their predicament. But God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should change his mind 
over what he has spoken concerning your life. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. The last scripture. I just want to encourage us tonight. Because you see, sometimes many of us really think and we can be tempted to think that believers are just faking these things. It really doesn't work. It's just that people are trying and let's see how far it goes. Hebrews 6 from verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of strife. Next verse. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto who? Us. According to Galatians 2.29. 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye what? Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he said, Willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Next verse. That by two immutable things which it was impossible Possible. Do you know what impossible means? Impossible means if by mistake God calls this guy a woman, he must change to a woman because God cannot lie. It's not that he does not. Even if he speaks by mistake. That was why when Balaam, listen, listen. When the prophet was called to go and curse Israel, he said, I have been commanded to bless I have already spoken it. I cannot take it back again. When Esau came and said, Is there no blessing left? Isaac said, It's too late. Something has left me because I was representing God. What is it about? Can you not just say, Okay, son, I bless you. What was he talking about? He said, Everything that is there, I have given it. So where is the blessing? Is it, a, is it just that he died on his son? That another person comes to say, Please bless me. He said, It's too late. He was not just talking of, I bless you, I bless you. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Cause He will give up on you. He's able. Listen, let me tell you something about God. Every time God wants to speak, the first thing he examines is his ability, whether he can do it or not. God will never say anything he cannot do. It's only men that talk, can say, I'll build you a house. Tomorrow in the afternoon, come and collect the key of the house. That's a man talking. But when God speaks, that's why when the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he was speaking as an oracle. And the one who the king leaned on said, are you kidding? Because he thought God was a man. And he said, really, you will see it. But you will never eat of it. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us. If we think God is playing pranks with us, and God is joking, have you read in this Bible that hailstones came from heaven? Have you read from this Bible that lepers, four lepers were running and they had the sound. It was a multiplied effect. Have you heard that people entered fire and it did not destroy them? Question. It's not just yes. Do you believe? Because the Bible says Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I'm about to teach on something very powerful. Very briefly and then we'll pray. But it's going to be a waste if you think God is playing games with you. I know that God is too serious to allow Jesus Christ die on the cross. Is that a joke? The Bible says, He that did not spare his only son, but offered him freely, shall he not with him give us what? All things, not some things. Say, I believe the word of God. See, this is, the, this is the true foundation of faith that lasts. Not this emotionalism that people are doing in the body of Christ. This is the foundation of true faith. Hallelujah. 
I had a vision in the course of the week. And I saw the map of Africa. And all of a sudden, I saw like a serpent. And it was moving across it. And the Lord told me, I had that, this scripture. They are taken for a prey. And none say it restore. Hallelujah. When God shows me things like this, it's because he wants us to act. Hallelujah. And then the Lord began to tell me how that death looms across the continent of Africa and even in the nation of Nigeria. It, uh, listen, 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 listen. There is death. There is the event of death that the Bible calls sleeping. Is that true? We just call it sleeping. That's not what I'm talking about. Because according to scripture, those who sleep, those who die in Christ, Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die. He was not talking about oppression of the spirit of death. Well, that's why I, did, I didn't write victory over death. Because I want you to understand what I'm sharing. Victory over the spirit of death. Say amen. Immediately I saw this. I said, ah... Is because of something very, very prophetic that God is doing in our nation. I've been announcing this all through different meetings and different conferences. And if this death is not stayed, there will be many casualties. But tonight, my goal is to demystify this thing called death. Because I tell you, when the Lord, in this vision that the Lord was showing me, I could feel fear. Believers have been captured by the spirit of fear. Pastors, leaders, apostles, prophets. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none see it restored. Hallelujah. Said these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent carpenters. Hallelujah. Is someone getting what I'm saying now? The spirit of death. He said, Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? The first thing I want you to know about the spirit of death is that it is a spirit. It is a demon spirit. Please, brothers and sisters, don't let anyone confuse you. Look up, please. Look up. Many of us here have lost loved ones. Some of them have actually gone resting. It was their due season. It was their time. But can I tell you something? There are many people whose exit out of this earth realm is as a result of being victims of the claws and the pangs of death. And we must, we must contend and refuse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. When the Lord showed me this vision, I was very, very touched. And I knew that God wanted us to begin to speak and to open the body of Christ to the revelation that will sustain them in power. And now, I'm not one person who likes talking and announcing miracles and all of that. I like the things to happen and let the people just hear by themselves. But something happened very striking in the course of the week. A lady was in ICU. We hope that when she's done, she will come to testify. Hallelujah. And the lady was under some heavy gadgets and all of that. And then eventually she gave up the ghost. When she died, they were calling me, calling me and said, this lady had died. Everything was over. It was packed up. And then I told the lady that was talking to me, listen please. I told her, I said, put the phone in the dead lady's ears. Just make contact with her ears. And she put the phone and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I bring back her spirit to her body. Nothing happened right away. We off the phone. Brothers and sisters, this is verified. It happened in Asokoro just a few days ago. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, from nowhere, this girl sneezed back to life and started, when she sneezed, listen, 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 that's not even the testimony. When she sneezed back to life, after some hours, she started shouting my name in the hospital. And she was shouting and she asked them to, she said, why did you stop me? This was her testimony, listen. She said, 
when she was going to the gate, she just found herself in a place. Of course, for those of you who have read Divine Revelation books, you know. And she saw several people coming from the earth realm. And it was her time and she was going. Approaching and someone was, it's like people were going to the gates, you know. The pearly gates that the Bible talks about. And while she was there, she could hear from the earth that they are praying. It's like people were praying, different people. And then she said the moment she was there, the next thing she had a loud shout and it was my voice. I was called, it was like a magnetic force. It was pulling her back and she was saying, no, I don't want to go back. And then the angel, she would enter the gate and the angel said, can you not hear that he's calling you? We cannot allow you to come. Listen, this is a truth. She's going to come here and testify. That can you not hear? And then he told her that it's not your time. Return back. And truly, when she spoke, it was the exact time that I was praying for her. Hallelujah. This girl, listen, that's not even the testimony. She, she came back to life with such a dramatic presence. She was blasting in tongues. When the nurse and the doctors came, the power of God came upon the nurse instantly. Right there, listen. The doctor was so intimidated, he left. And the nurse was there. The, the lady who was talking with her called and said, I want to give my life to Christ. This lady was speaking utterly mysteries because she came back with an experience. I mean, her bed was vibrating. She was vibrating. I sent the text to a few of the leaders. This is how you know that. I, for me, it was a confirmation. The, the goal is not, okay, dead, raised and all of that. Thank God for all of those things. But for me, it was a confirmation. And then guess what happened? The lady said, one of the doctors came and looked at her. And he said, be careful. And then when she was sleeping in the night, one of the doctors came to her in the spirit to kill her in the hospital. Are you getting my point now? And then she began to pray. And then in the morning, he came and confronted them. And said, listen, you have not seen anything yet. The lady that put her ears, huh, that put the phone in the ear of the dead girl, was just going to get privileges and return. And a car from their back just smashed that girl. And I heard she died in the afternoon. Can you imagine? Are you seeing that evil is real? For standing to make sure somebody did not die. Our hospitals have now become occultic places. Nina Yesune. Bazan Koma, Bazan Koma, Baya Nina Esme, Bazan Koma, Bazan Koma, Baya Nasa Haluna, I can take it no more, Bazan Koma, Nasa Haluna. In my life, death has tried me many times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't you think I'm just talking nonsense? From birth, the devil wanted to take my life. I didn't have the privilege of enjoying breast milk to start with. Let's even start from that one. Praise God. I've been diagnosed of all sorts of things. And I've seen the hand of God. Are you getting my point? I have met with armed robbers on the way. Car has jammed me once. So don't think I'm just talking rubbish. Death is a spirit. Tonight, we will rest this issue of death once and for all. Rome, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. What is this mysterious phenomenon called death that can scare any man, scares the rich, scares the poor? Accidents, infirmities, 
incurable diseases, acts of wickedness and terrorism, all kinds of things that just brutally exit people out of this earth. Is there a way out? Revelations. Verse 8, verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. Verse 7. Please read. And when he had opened the fourth seal, these were the, the riders upon the four horse. Are you getting my point? I heard the voice of the first beat, and he said, What? Come and see. Next verse, please. And I looked, and I behold, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was what? So this mysterious spirit that has been responsible for the premature exiting of people is not just a phenomenon. The Bible tells us that he's a real spirit. He sits upon a horse and he does not walk alone. Hell followed him. I told you hell is a spirit. Are you seeing it there in your Bible? <laughs> hmm. And power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. So how does death manifest? It kills with what? Are you seeing now? Sword is the manifestation of that spirit. And he uses a word again. Hunger. It is still the same spirit. And number three, what you now call death. He named the event after himself. And then the fourth part he said, and with the beasts. You know who the beasts are in the earth? He's not just talking of wild animals. This is the terrorism and all of these things we call. He said, and with the beasts of the earth. They are all the manifestation of how this spirit operates. Are you getting my point now? Remember, Paul was saying he was confronted by beasts and wild animals. Right? He, didn't, he said, although he was not just talking of literal animals, he meant these, those who were opposing the cause of Christ. And so he said, this is how this spirit, he sits upon a horse and sends all of these things as envoys. Hunger. The sword. Manifestations of beasts. And everything. But the Bible says he sat upon a pale horse. And his name is what? Death. You must understand that death is a spirit. Brothers and sisters. Accidents. Incurable diseases. All of these devilish dangerous things. As common as they look. They are the vehicles. Through which this spirit operates. Please get this. I know that many of us, some of us have buried our loved ones. Some of us have been victims of all of these things. Don't worry. Just listen to the word of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please understand that nothing just happens in this realm. If you can believe this, this is your first deliverance tonight. Nothing. A car does not just jam people, brothers and sisters. At every given point in a man's life, He's been influenced by a spirit. There is nothing like neutral. Please hear me. You are either under the influence of the spirit of God or some influence of demon spirits. Is someone getting what I'm saying? When a man says he's an atheist, for instance, that in itself is a manifestation of the spirit of deception. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shouted, nothing just happens. Say it again, nothing just happens. Jesus was giving us an interesting parable. And he said, while men slept, right? While men slept, he said something happened. An enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and left. So that you lie down to sleep, fine and sound. And then by morning you wake up with a lump. Question, in how many hours did the lump just get up? What sponsored it that it grew more than the normal growth of the body? 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now the Ebola virus and all those devilish things manufactured and fabricated from hell. Right? This is not the first time that devilish virus is coming to the earth. It had come during John Lake's time. And John Lake stamped it to his feet and it went back. And he says, let's try again. After many years. And let's see whether there are still ambassadors. I tell you the truth, there are still ambassadors. John Lake, that was the plague that was killing people. And John Lake said, what, what in the world is this? Let's go to the microscope. And he ended that issue once and for all. The earth is becoming more interesting. Are you getting my point? The earth is becoming more interesting because there is, there is an open confrontation of darkness. The Bible says kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. But it is they that know their God. They shall be strong. Not they that have heard about him. Not they that preach him. They that have paid the price to know their God. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits in the name of the Lord Jesus. So death is a spirit. Very quickly, is there a way out of the grip of this devil and this spirit? That's what tries to come to take many people's life in the night. Many people. Have you wondered, excuse me, have you wondered why people die in the night? Have you wondered why women make loose children in the night? Why not in the day? The mystery of the night. Hallelujah. And I tell you, there is a visitation of the spirit of death over the nation of Nigeria. I know it. I have seen it. It's looming across territories. Mysterious accidents. Mysterious rage and violence. The Bible says they are taken for a prey. And there is no voice. We are busy trying to raise money in our churches. We are trying to buy suits. The devil has distracted us men of God. We are trying to buy new cars. And the devil tells the demons keep distracting them. While death keeps wiping people. And for as long as it has not touched us. This is the same spirit that manifested in the days of Esther. Esther was enjoying in the palace. She did not know that God took her to the palace. So that she will be a voice that will cry restore. She was the apostolic voice in that dispensation. And the Bible says, when Mordecai, who was a watchman, sitting by the gates, he said, I will stand upon my watch, Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. There are no watchmen again in this country. We have lost the art of sensitivity. We have lost it to food. We have eaten the food of idols and the king's meat. A little sleep, the Bible says. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands. And poverty comes upon you like an armed bandit. This is what has happened to the church. We have been stripped and robbed. And we have been distracted because of the bounty. I believe in prosperity but not at the expense of that which the Spirit of God is doing. For as long as we are in our various churches and cathedrals, and we feel we are secured, and there are, there are many men of God who do not believe in the Bible, it's just that they have a lot of security. And they don't go around anyhow. Right? But there are so many people who are dying, who have stood face to face, and they applied the messages that we preach, and it didn't work. And they die. And we keep saying, don't worry. Who is deceiving who? There's got to be something authentic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why will I not talk of faith and courage when there are all kinds of bodyguards following and all kinds of security people and your car is a bulletproof car? Who will not have faith under that circumstance? And your flight is a private one. And everything... Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. God will judge any man of God and any pastor who does not commit himself 
to teach believers truth. Right? And to stand in the place of intercession and prayer and to shout restore. It's not only about collecting the tithe of God's people and telling them so seeds and do this. And then the moment they keep dying like chickens, the Bible says they are taken for a prey and there is no voice to say restore. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Death is a spirit. I'd like everybody to say it. Death is a spirit. Say it again. Death is a spirit. If you know that death is a spirit, you will know that it's not a mysterious phenomenon that just comes. Listen, I travel all the time. I have, I have, I have in my little life, I don't know, only God will tell, only when we get to heaven, that I will have the privilege of seeing the amount of poisons I have eaten in my life. One. Two. Only God knows the enchanters that speak spells every day concerning my life. You don't know? You want to be a man of God? You make impact and think the devil will fold his arms to watch. Never forget praying for one lady one time during Koinonia, um, during the counseling. And, and, and the spirit just shouted and said, Joshua, you, you. You know, just warning and all of that. Day and night, brothers and sisters, there are enchantments against the people of God. And so if you do not know where you stand, one outing you can leave and not return again. But let me tell you something. The Bible says the first Adam was made a quickening soul. But the second Adam has been made not a life-giving spirit. Not a life-possessing spirit. You have so much of that life. It is within your power to dispense it. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. How do you enforce your victory over this spirit of death? Especially in this day and age. Please write it down. There are principles. It doesn't happen by magic. Victory over the spirit of death. Number one. Realize that in Christ, if you are born again and you have given your heart to Jesus Christ genuinely, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 1 that we are above. Everybody say, I'm above. I don't know how to make you believe it, but say, I am above. Say it again, I am above. It's a spiritual location. Ephesians 2 verse 1. So realize that you are from above. Hallelujah. It says, and you are sick, quickened, who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Verse 2. Wherein in time past, this and that and that and that, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3. Okay, let's, let's just run. Look for that part that says we have been exalted above. That's why I'm looking for. Verse what? 6. Six, please. Let's just run down. Let's save time. And he had raised who? Everybody say us. That means not just Christ alone. The Bible says in the curse we identified with him. Is that true? By the mystery of the Holy Communion. Is that true? We entered into him. And so because we partook of the sufferings of Christ, we also partake of the glory that follows. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, when he was raised up, we were raised up together with him. And he has made us to what? Sit in heavenly places. That's an exact spiritual location. Next verse. Ephesians 1. Everybody say, I've been raised up with Christ. And I'm seated with him. Far above. Say it again, far above. Far above accidents. Far above death. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, say it too. Far above accidents. Far above terrorism. Far above death. Far above wickedness. Hallelujah. Yes, I believe this with all my heart. 
I'm going to show you a powerful scripture when we're ready to pray. He said, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Ah, uh, is that it? Anyway, let's, let's save time. 21. Oh, yes. Far above what? Principalities. How many of them? And power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, because there are names in other worlds too that help people in this world. So he said, every name, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Say, I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah, I'm far above. Far above every devil. Far above every enchantment. Every act of witchcraft. Just pray it in one minute. I'm far above. I'm far above. I don't live by the sword. I won't die by the sword. I'm far above. Just pray in one minute and we'll sit down and continue. Mambra teke parada balada. No, not a victim of accident. No, not a victim of bomb blast. By the mighty hand of God. Shake it, baba baba. Shake out fear from your life. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from out of my mouth. I'm far above, far above in the name of Jesus, far above thrones, far above covens, far above witchcraft. The Bible says it. I believe it. Jesus is Lord of my life. This word is true in my life. I'm far above. I don't doubt it. I'm far above. I'm far above. Hallelujah. So that's the first revelation you must have. If you must conquer the spirit of death. I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah. Let them cast their spells. Far above. Far above. Make all the enchantments. I will go out and come back safe. I'm far above. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am far above. Man take a labor for Far above. There is a rider upon a horse, but I am far above. Hallelujah. Number two. <laughs> Hebrews chapter two from verse nine. Then we move to 14 and 15. Let me show you something powerful. Brothers and sisters, when a thing is a mystery in your life, it can confuse you. But when you unlock the mysteries, there is no confusion there again. Poverty was once as dangerous as then until men found out that there is an exact formula. And today they teach it with audacity. Is because many people have not studied the concept of death and life. And they have not been able to prove to the body of Christ. The same way men fear death. That's how they fear demons. Is that true? That's how they fear poverty. Until certain people say, let's enter this thing and find out. And they entered and came out. They said, there's nothing there. But we see Jesus. Hebrews 2. Verse 9. Who was made a little lower than the angels of the... For what? The suffering of death. This is Jesus paying the price. Crowned with glory and honor. That he by the grace of God should do what? Should do what? Read your Bible. Should do what? Test death for who? Every man. The, this is your Bible. This is, that's why I started by saying, do you believe it? That means, once and for all, Jesus offered himself that the spirit of death will afflict him. Once, 
for every man. It's not talking about sleeping. No. Jesus died a brutal death. That was the spirit of death. But he allowed it once so that no man would be buffeted by this nonsense again. The Bible says it. He tasted it. He tasted it. He tasted the sting of death. Are you getting my point? That was why when he was about to resurrect, those gates of death in, in Psalm 24 said, who is this king of glory that wants to come back? No! When we close the door, you cannot come back again except somebody in this realm calls you who wants to call himself back. He tasted death. He tasted death. He tasted death. I believe this with all my heart. See, it is the truth you know that will make you free. Not the truth you have heard about. It is not the light that rises that makes you arise. It is the one that comes to you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. It has always been there, but it will never work until it comes to you. you say, and the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. Let's look at verse 14. Ah, I love the word of God. Everybody read. For as much as ye are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had what? The power of death, that is the devil. Through death he passed through it, so that he will destroy the power, the devil and his power. Remember in Revelation, he said power was given to that spirit. Verse 15. Everyone read. And deliver them who through the word stop. Not through who through death. Through the fear. There is a terror. There is a spirit. That's why every time wickedness is happening, the spirit of fear always precedes it. To make people afraid. When a Habal is saying three days, you will not leave. He's releasing the spirit of fear. The fear of death. Where all their lifetime subject to what? This is what is going on. You can't go out in the morning because you are afraid. What if this car has an accident? What if the plane crashes? What if the luxurious just... What if, what if, what if? Hi! Let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe what I'm sharing with you? You take this word as true and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death brings bondage. Some of you are supposed to have traveled. You can't travel. Because you are wondering, the car. Number three, realize that death has been defeated. Revelations 1 verse 18. Revelations 1 verse 18. Please, let's rush. Revelations 1 verse, 7, verse 18. Please just write it and then we'll read it quickly. One to read. This is Jesus speaking. I am he that liveth and was what? Dead. And behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And I have the keys. Is that in your Bible? I have the keys. In other words, it is within my power to control its operation. I have the keys. Please realize this. I'm building up a revelation. So we see that he tasted death and he has the keys. We are going to find out where that key is today. Because he was talking to the churches. Talking to John and then to the churches. He said, I have the keys. First Corinthians 15 verse 55. The scripture we saw. How can a spirit terrorize nations, terrorize people? 
Oh death, where is your sting? It likens the way death takes people to the sting of a scorpion. So he said, I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions. Scorpions that sting. He said, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, you have been boasting that any man you take must enter. Where is now your victory? There are people who have defied the power of the grave. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Number four. How do you enforce your victory? You must apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Now I'm teaching you how to make it work in your life. Exodus chapter 12, please. Verse 7 and then 12 to 14. Please, let's hurry up. Exodus chapter 12. Moses showed us this revelation. Everyone look up. Now, hold on. Can you see that this is not the first time the spirit of death is passing over regions? Is that true? It has happened many times. And you can exempt yourself and your loved ones first. And then stand to speak over others. You cannot give what you do not have. Is that true? And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two sides of the posts. And on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance. I am the Lord. 13. And the blood shall be unto you. What? A token. A sign. A symbol. A, an indication. For when I see the blood. I will pass over you. And what? The plague. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. What's the name of that virus again? Huh? Ebola virus. And the plague, the Bible calls it a plague. It said it shall not be upon you because it comes to destroy. It shall not be upon you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. I have prayed for too many people to contact communicable disease if I was faking what I'm telling you. Are you getting my point? It's easy to pray for people in a distance. But when you lay hands on people and you are breathing on people, I do this everywhere I go. I would have caught all kinds of things by now. The last time I went for a medical checkup, the doctor was surprised. See, the Bible says, we, it says we are not how did he put it? We have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. If you don't believe this thing, it will show in your life one day and it will become obvious that truly you do not know. Hallelujah. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep the feast. What feast? You shall keep this mystery of the application of the blood. It's not an Old Testament concept. To the Lord throughout your generation. He says you shall keep the feast in an ordinance. When? Are you seeing it now? It didn't say it will expire. The mystery of the operation of the blood to bring deliverance and to secure you is a mystery that had been there even before Jesus died. And the Bible says it is an ordinance that you will keep if you are interested in living. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So you must plead the blood. And there are three ways to plead the blood. Number one, in prayers. When you pray, you plead that blood. As the price. The blood not only saves, it delivers, it protects. You plead the blood in prayers. Hallelujah. Number two, by the mystery of the communion. The mystery of the communion. The cup. The body. And the cup. 
He says, for this cause, many of you take it unworthily. And some of you are sick. Some of you are weak. And some of you do sleep. Number three. The mystery of the blood of sprinkling. Hallelujah. He said, you shall sprinkle it upon your walls and upon every of these things. Three scriptural ways of engaging the power of the blood to bring us victory. Let's hurry up. The last way or the last way of enforcing your victory is through the authority and power that is conferred in the name of Jesus. I like this one. Goodness. One of my best scriptures. Luke 10, 19, please. I'm about to jump up right now. Hmm. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain. Behold, see, conceive it as a reality that I have given you. I give you. The word there is not power like dunamis, it's the word exousia. I give you authority. The authority that comes with my office, I give it to you. To tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over how many? All the powers of the enemy. This is the best part of the verse. And nothing shall by any means, you went to school. Brothers and sisters, what is the meaning of by any means? Whether it is by your mistake, whether it is by your lack of prayer, what, by any means, if you stand in this office, I stake my reputation that when it comes to protecting you, nothing shall by any means. There are different means it can come through. Your carelessness, right? Your miss. I, I teach you a secret of spiritual immunity. You will walk through challenges that are killing others by a mystery that you will never be able to understand. He said, nothing, nothing, nothing. It is on the strength of this scripture. The Bible says, surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they shall scatter. He said, they will come to you in one way and scatter in seven ways. Behold, I give you authority. Exousia. While I was in the earth, there was authority that was given to me. And by reason of that authority, forces bowed. They didn't bow because my name was called Jesus. They bowed because of this authority. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 10, it says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name. What is in a name? It's an office. Jesus is not just the name of a person. The word Lord, see, listen. He said, God gave him a name. The name is not Jesus. I hope you know. I hope you know. No, the name is not Jesus. We call Jesus because it was the name of the person that stood in that office. Let's read on verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and in earth and things under the earth. Next verse please. And that every tongue should confess that that Jesus has entered this office called Lord. That's the name. That's the name. Lord, Master, Absolute Controller. And the Bible says whoever. That's why the Bible said the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The worlds and they. It was the revelation. It was the coronation service that the psalmist saw. So he said the Lord 
said to my Lord, sit down at the right hand until I make your enemies. He never mentioned Jesus there. He said the Lord, the absolute control of the universe, now said to my Lord, who got it by conquest, sit down. And the Bible says whoever enters this office, some things will start becoming possible. Are you getting my point? In Mark chapter 16, he said, This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in this office, Haya, he said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whoever carries this office becomes a controller, becomes a mysterious commander. Listen, if I cannot make it for Koinonia or I, there is a program and they keep a seat here, right? And they say this seat is for um, maybe the president or the pastor somewhere, right? And I call Yinka and I say, Yinka, I cannot make it, but I send you with my name. Are you seeing that? What they are interested in is not the personality. It is the office. The moment he comes, listen. If he can donate 5 million, whether I like it or not, everybody say whoever occupies this office. That's why SSG, the secretary of the federal government will go and represent good luck. And they will say, and the president said. Every presidential car you see presidency. It doesn't mean Aso Rock. That means the collection of the people that are in this office. I hear the chains falling. You will only confront death when you stand in this office and say, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh great, that vicious devil that will make a driver lose control and maim and destroy people. Where is your sting? Listen, the patriarchs of old were men of war. They fought war from birth till they died. Yet they were not afraid of the sword. It's not like our own that periodically it comes. They were born and bred in war. David was a man of war. I hear the chains falling. I come in that name. He sent me as an ambassador. Oh, I believe it. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. An ambassador is one who has been sent. 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 T.L. Osborne saw so many miracles in his crusade. And when he stands on the crusade ground, he says, do you believe in Jesus? And they say, yes. He says, he sent me. He sent me to this crusade to tell you your sins are forgiven. He sent me to declare, I'm speaking to you, that in that office your sins are forgiven. Now, then, we are what? Ambassadors. Envoys. Representatives. With the full backing of heaven. The full backing. The Bible says, as my father has sent me the same way he equipped me the same way he was there for me that i could call on a legion of angels brothers and sisters this is not about being a man of god this is your positional advantage this is really the revelation of what we call new creation realities hallelujah so you realize Death is a spirit. It's not omnipresent. It operates through a network of wicked devils. But it's a spirit. And the revelation that you know translates into light. And when that death sees you because light cannot, darkness cannot stand light. So they shall take up deadly things and it shall not hurt them. They shall pass an environment that has Ebola virus 
and rather than destroying them it will be a blessing for those who are infected because you come in the power look let me tell you brothers and sisters the bible says before the the great and terrible day of the lord elijah will appear again you know who elijah was elijah is the spirit of the prophetic it's a true apostolic spirit that will challenge anything that is not god hallelujah it's important what you believe it's important what you believe say i refuse to fear say it i refuse to fear you must kill fear from your life brothers and sisters people do not just die and you know hold on if it's just death that many people are afraid of do you know there is a state that you'll be alive and you'll beg for death because of the 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 way the devil can bastardize your body the bible says he kept his bones so that none of them are broken have you read that in your bible that's what we call shalom it's a covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken hallelujah and he said peace i give you he was not talking of quietness he means i give you an ability to be undisturbed my peace i give unto you not that the not as the world gives so you can stand up tall. And people are asking you, what is the basis? You are just talking nonsense. Listen, I was in the city of Jos. Five days to 9-11, on the 7th, 7th of September, 2001, I think. That was when the first disastrous strike of the enemy. I was in the town. I was in the middle of all of these things. Are you getting my point? In my little life, I have seen a lot of things. When the plane crash that was going to happen some years ago, I think last year or two years ago, I was on my way to worry. I could feel that spirit of death. See, it's not that it chooses a particular plane. They are bloodthirsty spirits that just keep hoping something will work. Well, because we had problem landing and then we landed and we went to worry. I knew something was wrong. On my way back, I, I flew to Kano. While we were in the air, that was when the, uh, the, the plane crash was happening. So many people were calling me and because my phone was switched, they thought that, ah, something happened. Ah! Paul will go to a city, they will kill him. As soon as they leave, he will get up. <laughs> Mystery man. Yeah, it's in your Bible. Paul died many times. He would just lie down. And once they move, he would just get up. Don't get excited for nothing. Do you believe it? I remember a time when I saw in a vision, I saw my mother's coffin. I knew it was over. I saw people there crying. I saw it. And I got up. Ah, my family. There is a lady here, I'm sure she may be part of the people here. She used to be, when she was an unbeliever, she, used, she had one serious sickness, infirmity, and she was in the hospital. She told me that every time it was around maybe three to four, she would see the spirit of death. It would enter the world. You know how doctors walk around. She didn't know it was death, but this particular man will just enter and walk around to several beds. In the morning you hear crying. Death. Oh, death, where is your sting? I have met the spirit of death once, face to face in my life. Let me tell you that story briefly and then we pray. I was in secondary school, and the way we arrange our beds, I was close to the door. Listen, I'm being very sincere with you. I didn't know it was the spirit of death. While I was sleeping, very cold. I saw, you know how these films where they have these people that put on hood, like knights, all these kinds of people, that's how it came. I woke up, I was not in a vision, brothers and sisters, the same way I'm looking at you like this. He was walking around the hostel. 
as though looking for someone. And then while if everybody was deep asleep, which was mysterious, there was no light. And then while it was about to go out, I was looking at it, it was looking at me. When it was about to turn, I looked at it. Very dark, with just bulgy eyes, you cannot see. Some of you who have watched that film, Lord of the Rings, you know how those, those guys are, those kings, that's how it is. How do you think those people wrote these things? I saw it. I never had a conversation. But today, I know I will meet it many times in many miracle services and in my travels across. And I've made up my mind. I will stamp it every day of my life. You must make that determination because death is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The sting of death is real. If you joke with what I'm telling you, you will be alive in the morning. Ten minutes later, you are out. Take men of courage and audacity. Who is God speaking to tonight? Fear not, brothers and sisters. Not the arrows of terrorism. There is a prophetic destiny in this nation. And the soul of this nation is already with God beyond the reach of anything. I shared this thing when I was teaching in, in PFN Crusade in Abuja. That's the reason why Nigeria has the letter Y on the rivers. It's an imprint of the signature of the word Yahweh that God is in charge. Listen, upon this nation. Yes, it's not, it has nothing to do with Lord Lugard. That was a writing, Isaiah 18, a land whose rivers divide. God wrote his name there. Listen, you know why he used the waters? Go and read your Bible. Water has always symbolized abundance and it has always symbolized the echo of God's voice. The voice of God upon the waters is mighty. Hallelujah. So many things will happen in this nation. Let me tell you. You see the thing happening? Bible says, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The church needs to pray and we need to realize that our prayers can withhold evil. Let's not just sit down powerless and hope that nothing will happen. Are you getting my point? And then number two, walk the principles of the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, you can walk fine, you can walk alive, you can move on strong. Refuse to die. It's a choice. Choose life. He said, I said before you. Is that true? Blessing and cursing. I didn't say the other three parts because obedience to parents, you already know that, right? And then your assignment. These are the three other factors that govern longevity. Your choice, choosing life. Obey your father and your mother that your days will be long and it will be well with you. And then finally, I shall not die but leave to declare. Are you ready to pray now? Rise up on your feet. Let's do some prayer, even if it's just for five minutes. Hallelujah. Please spare yourself three, three. We are going to pray. Before we pray for you, we are going to intercede for this country. Three, three. Come on now, let's pray. I call for that priest in you because we are about to pray. Spare yourselves and let's pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shekete Papa, pray for Zaria, pray for Kaduna State. That's your Jerusalem. We stay the power of evil and death and terrorism. We command as ambassadors. Shekete Pokotopa. We challenge thrones. We challenge yokes. We challenge spells. Every manifestation of the spirit of death, of the sword, of the wickedness of men. We command those spirits. Rekete kotopo kotopa. Rente leke brosa. Embrekete tekete papa papa. We cause the powers in the heavens. We cause the power. We cause.
because the activities of necromancers, the activities of sorcerers, the activities of wizards, make them for Rotopakaya. He makes the diviners mad. He causes the wisdom of the wise to go backward. We pray in the name of Jesus. We challenge death over Syria, over Kaduna, over the north, over Nigeria. We rebuke you. We are the apostolic voices that cry, restore, restore, restore. You will not take the souls of men. We forbid you by the hand of God. We forbid you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We forbid you. We forbid you. We forbid you. We pray for the peace of Daria. We pray for the peace of Kaduna State. We pray for the peace of the North. We pray for the peace of our dear nation God's own nation with the signature of his majesty upon the borders of our nation O death where is your sting O grave where is your victory O death where is your sting Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I want you to rebuke the spirit of death. You now know it's a spirit. Cast it away from our environment. Cast it away from your family. It will not come upon the head of any of your loved ones. Go ahead and speak. I cause death over this territory, over my family. My loved ones are covered. There is a shield. There is a shield. That rider upon a pale horse will never find entrance. Not by accident. Not by sickness. Not by pestilence, not by plague. I break the power of death. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I'd like you to plead the blood of Jesus across the territories like the lintel of the houses and upon your life and your family go ahead and plead the blood we invoke the power of the blood we invoke the mystery of the blood the mystery of the blood the mystery of the blood pray koinonia over Zaria we invoke the mystery of the blood over Kaduna State we invoke the mystery of the blood over Nigeria we invoke the mystery of the blood over our families we command the blood the power of the blood We are sealed with the blood unto protection, unto perseverance, unto preservation, unto health, unto wellness. 
pray. He said, My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth from my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. It says, I give you power. I give you authority. Hallelujah. I give you authority. Exousia. I bring you into an office and I give you the backing of that office. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And in the name of Jesus, you are going to release life everywhere. Everywhere. In your life, go ahead. Stretch your hands across the north, the south, the east, the west. Go ahead and begin to prophesy life. Go ahead. We speak life. We speak life. 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 We prophesy life to the borders of this city. We prophesy life. Life. We come in the authority of the Lord Jesus. Life. Life. In all the 36 states of the Federation, we speak life. 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 We prophesy. We release the spirit of life. We prophesy life. We speak life. 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 In the name of Jesus, we are life giving spirits. We command life. 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 Health. Vitality. Life. Life. Hallelujah. Look up, we're rounding up. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Now let me explain to you what you just did. Verse 2. For the law that activates the spirit of life can do something. It can set men free. There is a principle that activates the operation. Are you seeing it now? When it comes to conquering sin and death, there is a spiritual law. He said it's called the law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus. For the law. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. You are going to invoke the operation of this law in your life. And say in my life, right now, the law of life, the spirit of life, begins to work. Every dead organ, hear the word of the Lord. Every infirmity, the spirit of life, the spirit of life, the spirit of life. Holy Spirit, manifest as the spirit of life in my body. No cancer, no HIV, no Ebola virus, no infirmity. The spirit of life activated is a law. It needs to be activated. The law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus. Immunes me, sets me free from the oppression 
that brings sin and death. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Rekoto pokotos. I choose life. I choose life in my body. I choose life. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 91. Psalm 91. From verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Next verse. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day. Next verse. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness not the destruction that wasted in noonday next verse a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right side but none shall come near, near you say it shall not come near me say it, it shall not come near me now in the next one minute with every strength you have you know all the weapons that this spirit uses. Accident, whatever, come against them. You are far from my dwelling. No accident. Not to my life. Not to my family. Not to God's people. I cause that spirit. Pray. No death, no accident, not by the sword, not by the arrows of wicked men, not by gunshots of robbers. And wicked men, there is a spiritual immunity at work in my life, at work in my family. Hallelujah. 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 Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. It's one thing for your greatness to be increased. But how many of you know that every time you rise in this kingdom, success, listen carefully, I'm teaching now. Success has a side effect both to those who pray and seek your good and to those who will react as a result when you study the subject of success every time a man rises um, you realize that rising in life is warfare are we together because as you rise your rising destroys the excuses of people who probably would have given a reason as to why men cannot rise or should not rise and so naturally the side effect is that there will be untold battles battles from family members battles from colleagues and contemporaries even battles from mentors and those that you seek direction from are we together now when people rise um, the accolades and the claps that you receive is not all there is to the process so you you need to be comforted on every side for your rising to give you value 
just because a man looks at his son and gives him the coat of many colors and he goes innocently to testify not before his enemies his brothers here's what daddy did for me the brother said oh so we are here taking care of sheep and then he gives one person out of all of us and they said let's kill him brothers conspiring most times you may not know how hostile human beings are until results begin to speak in your life every time you look like them there is no basis for fighting and quarreling for as long as the house has not been built for as long as you are a general man of god with no unusual dimension of grace it's acceptable you are friends to everyone for as long as you are at a financial level that resonates with your co-tenants or resonates with your core people no one will fight you so you will be deceived into thinking the world is such a peaceful place welcome to a world where people fight successful people from the day you announced that god gave me a job all of a sudden your food is no longer sweet all of a sudden your cloth has a problem all of a sudden your greeting becomes sarcasm that's the side effect of success and so it says thou shall increase my greatness but because with every increase there are battles lord don't leave me alone comfort me on every side don't just increase my greatness and leave me because there are certain levels of battles that can come to your life you will wish you never rose are we together have you seen people challenge you to a point that you say lord i i, I admire my yesterday i i didn't have money but i was peaceful i didn't have influence woe betide a man who rises without the help of god to sustain him there you will hate success hallelujah thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side comfort me on every side and so it is god's desire from the time that i i taught the lifter of men the the kinds of testimonies that have come already from that series not just within the local environment of the ministry here people whose lives have changed overnight and you know i taught us here that the anointing of the spirit is where his word is are we together not just his general word but his emphasis for a season are we together so if god is speaking as a healing god his anointing that will be present is the anointing to heal if god is speaking as a lifting god the anointing the anointing of the holy spirit will always be found where his word is if it looks like in a particular season you are not anointed or no longer as anointed as you want it may not be that you have backslidden it may have been that you have you have not found where the word is for the season because the word for the season is where the anointing for the season is that you were anointed yesterday does not mean that your anointing of yesterday will be relevant for today's challenge are we together god is in the business of lifting men and he's lifting us not just because um, we need to tell the world we are successful that's too small a reason to be lifted i told you that kingdom advance can only be possible under two conditions number one evangelism number two influence influence is important to enthrone christ within a sphere of human existence and so if we do not contend for influence if the only thing that happens to us is evangelism winning souls which is important and valuable then the church will not have a voice enough to institutionalize christ and his value system within society are we together it matters that the church not only has the word but have the voice to declare that word we must contend for the requisite level of influence that will make our words matter not only to fellow believers but to to every strata of human society business government media etc are you following me now 
so the subject of greatness is something that i want you to covet passionately we come from different backgrounds even christian backgrounds and some of us though well-meaning but have been erroneously indoctrinated into believing that any desire to want to rise to a position that is higher than than that which mediocrity affords is carnality and you shouldn't be interested in that let me tell you in the 21st century if you do not have a voice then there are certain things you cannot do for the kingdom are we together when it was time to bring a dream that will save the nation god searched around to look for who was from him and there was no believer who had the influence to do something about that dream so god had to make do with pharaoh god went to pharaoh and gave him the dream about the redemption of egypt and then God's people because Pharaoh was the only one who had the requisite influence to do something about it are we together there are certain levels of visions and revelations that you will never see no matter how you fast and pray because you do not have the influence to do anything about it are we together if God shows you something about a family that requires some kind of financial capability to solve their needs if you do not have the financial wherewithal you can only intercede so god will not waste his time bringing you that kind of dream he will find someone who has opened himself to that possibility in the kingdom and grant him access to that revelation because in seeing it he also has the ability to do something about it are we together it will no longer be that the church will buy a plot of land or plots of land and then the government will arise and seize it simply because everyone is in the church is spiritual anointed but with no voice jesus remained on the cross no influence could bring him down but a man called joseph of arimathea the bible called him a noble man he had both the political and financial power he went to caesar and demanded that jesus be brought down where would you keep him caesar said and he said no i have a virgin tomb and they took jesus and buried him there influence played a role in the salvation of our souls are we together now it matters that we rise to positions of kingdom influence thou shall increase give us that scripture please thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about why for the sake of your kingdom why for the sake of your glory for the sake of the advancement of your purposes thou shall increase my finances and comfort me round about thou shall increase the anointing upon my life and comfort me round about thou shall increase my sphere of influence thou shall increase my strategic alliances thou shall increase my voice thou shall increase the capacity my mind everything that needs to be increased should be increased in this season are we blessed and comfort me roundabout there are people here you are here seated many of the prayer requests that you are going to be submitting requires influence for it to be answered it doesn't just require god a man can answer that prayer are we together influence all you need is for someone to talk to someone to advocate for someone on your behalf and that whole prayer point that is giving you headache is solved in a moment it's amazing how influence can represent christ in a moment in a twinkling of an eye a challenge that has held a family a nation a territory just within a moment greatness is powerful you will never be able to legislate on behalf of the kingdom if you do not contend for certain dimensions of greatness and influence hallelujah this is a very powerful scripture that should be your prayer request in this season there are pastors who are anointed they love god they have revelation but they have rejected kingdom influence and it has pegged them down peg their ministries peg everything about them let me tell you something about followership nobody wants to follow a man who is not growing nobody wants to follow a man who is not rising are we together now 
Yes. For as long as we continue to celebrate mediocrity, for as long as we continue to allow ourselves to be, um, the Bible says, they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. For as long as we remain at the lowest levels in life, let me tell you this, we may keep feeling spiritual, but there is very little God will be able to do with us. It's true. When you increase in greatness, you give God space to find expression in and through you. In this season, God is passionately finding men who will embody influence with a heart for him so that he will be able to win people. Winning people one by one will not get the job done. We need to win territories through influence. Are we together now? Yes. Islam is one of the fastest growing religion in Europe and you will never see any city-wide crusade. You will never see any venue being rented for any conference. They are using one key. Everybody say influence. Because when a man is hungry, you don't give him a Bible. When a man is hungry, you put the gospel on a plate of a loaf of bread and give it to him. That's the only way he can eat that he can receive it. Are we together? You've heard me say it again and again. By the grace of God, I will never pastor a people who are spiritual but not influential. Both can go hand in hand. Now, every time you are doing things that are new or out of the box, you will be misunderstood because society is full of status quo. And most of those, those systems are largely founded upon mediocrity. The average believer does not understand how the kingdom should be advanced. They know how you should grow. They know how you should rise. They know how your spirit man should be strong. But they don't know how the purposes of God should be institutionalized within a territory. The subject of kingdom advance is seldom understood by many people. Very few people. I tell you this with, with, with no sense of... of um, criticism or whatever but even among us men of god there are very few people who understand kingdom advance we understand spiritual growth we understand the issues that concern our growth and character and so on and so forth but the issues that have to institutionalize christ so that 30 years after now our children will still be rooted in the things of god we hardly have that understanding and living in the 21st century has shifted things we must learn how to shift we must learn how to be strategic in our approach hallelujah the message remains the same but the communication must be strategic enough to be able to represent christ are we blessed thou shall increase my greatness before i continue i just feel we should pray this prayer in one minute i don't know what area listen greatness is a summation of excellence in many facets of your life some of us may be doing well in one area may be doing well in another area find the area where you know you cannot say you are experiencing greatness in and in one minute cry to god and say lord visit me in this area go ahead pray with all your heart lord you have granted me access to revelations i thank you stepping over my finances lord you have helped me in the area of my finances but my spiritual life is crushing to pieces grant me grace you have granted me access to revelations but my mind my mind is barren i need a miracle in my mind increase my capacity understanding make sure you are praying this is the miracle service many of the challenges that we have in our lives are dependent on these things whether you are standing whether you are at the window whether you are everywhere following online just go ahead and connect don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you it's a very serious prayer everyone that asketh receiveth lord increase my greatness increase my greatness comfort me increase my greatness for the sake of my family members increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed 
increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what i've shared just one key that can help us grow in greatness greatness is a system remember that the kingdom of god operates on mysteries and systems say after me mysteries say after me systems the kingdom of god is systemic god never does the same thing twice when he does a thing once he creates a system around it for continuity are we together he never created the plants and the animals twice he did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction he made one man one woman never to make another one again are we together there is a system so if your life is to excel it must be built on systems if your life is built on miracles as much as you are going to receive them miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of god is intervening to correct we were never designed to live off miracles listen very carefully if you live off miracles you will live a frustrated life we live off principles we live off the systems of the kingdom the systems of god create predictability they are an attestation to his justice the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic are we together first corinthians chapter 4 please give us verse 1 and verse 2 let's talk about just one key here faithfulness see after me faithfulness second corinthians chapter 4 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ paul is speaking now and stewards paul uses a very interesting language not not owners he calls them stewards the word steward is the word caretaker caretakers of the mysteries of god number two he says moreover it is required in stewards if it is true that you are a steward there is a requirement and he says moreover it is required in stewards that a man whoever says he is a steward must exhibit a character called faithfulness faithfulness he says must be found faithful there are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence their current financial level their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality faithfulness in the kingdom you grow it looks simple but write it in the kingdom you grow and jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup 
and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that are being produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of God, in business people, in young people, in students, in whatever dimension of life, that you be faithful. Listen very carefully. Be faithful. Be faithful. Never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth. You are only wasting your time. No matter how flamboyant the results are, it's a mirage. Anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking. Is joking, I repeat, is joking. Anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking. Anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking. There must be a track record in life. Your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 he says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and kobo he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor come pastor femi i can see him already warming up to be a very can i mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with god a time can come god can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this this, this is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand 
true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say ah this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it he should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god this these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know why you are looking at this but there is a God who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of God should not rise. Are we together? Many of us want resources. As I've lifted this 1,000 now, many of you have been looking at it. You are not even hearing me again. Listen. You are not faithful. If you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can God give you this and say let me have it back and you say Lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness Lord after all it came from you I, I you took me from nowhere soaking Gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need 
a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one-on-one -on -one. it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of god who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no i'm anointed if not because of condition don't i have a better revelation than kenny and god keeps you there say stay there i just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why God keeps him there. Faithfulness. All he may say is, God bless you. God lift you. God anoint you. And then you are there in your pride and arrogance. I just finished pieces in the book of Ephesians and you remain there for many years. Is God speaking to us? Never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you never rise 
everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his Lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou has been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou has been faithful over a few things what's your reward I will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient i'm coming i'm not ashamed to say god is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me i will teach i will make bible study notes and god is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou hast been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have is a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that had and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now 
we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what i'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah years ago i had a conversation we're about to pray with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and I said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and I think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking I'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous I say I'm not dangerous the laws of God are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of God whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what I'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think it's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah 
I challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving, you must trust God to go back and say, Lord, teach me your ways. We reign in this kingdom. We're about to pray now. I want to show you a very dangerous scripture that God opened my eyes to. Brothers and sisters, if God does not open your eyes to see how a thing works, you may never know. Do you know that in every challenge that you have right now, a way of escape is there? But it takes God to open your eyes. Psalm 77. Turn there. Let me show you something. Psalm 77 and verse 19. Psalm 77 verse 19. Give us from Amplified if it's possible. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Alpha and Omega, my trust is in you. I am that I am, my trust is in you. Tonight, I put them on you. My trust is in you. He says, your way in delivering your people was through the sea. Listen carefully. The same sea that was an obstacle. He said their way of escape was inside that water. Inside that trouble. He says, and your path through the great waters. How can you be in trouble? And God says, in that trouble, that's where your answer is. But it takes your eyes to see it. God hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it. He says your way of delivering your people was through the sea. The same sea. He said that your path through the water. Yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps. This one gave us King James again. It will take revelation for you to know how can I look at a water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I... but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. 
when God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things it's not just a ritual there is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained that every time you come before God he must open a way so don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say I went to every church I don't know what the church you went to believe but in this sanctuary there is a way there is a way I dare to tell you there is a way man of God I have been in I've gone everywhere with all due respect I don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary Solomon dedicated a place and said Lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill Daniel in the days of that of, of Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel opened the gate and faced Jerusalem. He, he was afraid. He couldn't depend on his faith. He opened the door and said, Lord, I engage the covenant. That covenant that Solomon made with the temple in Jerusalem. It is not only a man that can bring miracles. A place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord Many of you have come from several places. You have made sacrifices. Please don't come here wasting your time. And don't come here wondering. Let's see what God will do. Already I can answer you. You won't get anything. Already. Let me, let me be honest with you. Because God is not a magician. But there are people that come here determined. And say Lord I have seen you in this place. I can't go back this way. That something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i'd like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth. Testifiers of his faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh, is the Lord. Oh, is the Lord. Listen. It is our confidence in God and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 
he says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis he may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of God is powerful. Praise the Lord. Are we together? So you must understand that God in this season wants to shift you. But he won't just shift you just by saying shift. There are mysteries. Tonight I bring you a word. There is a way in the sea. Hallelujah, there is a way. There is a way. There is something God can do about your finances. There's something God can do about your family situation. You left fire on the mountain and came back. You wait until the Red Sea parts. And God will rubbish Pharaoh tonight in your presence. Rise up on your feet. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Go ahead. Shalamadosi atakatosi cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful Lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick. 
and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting god for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expected testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we are gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the working of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sea god bless you. Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. the honor yes lord we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so oh great 
place there is no one else like you oh jesus there is no one else like you yes you are great and you do miracles so great oh there is no the glory say you deserve the glory and the honor Lord and the honor so we lift our hands so we lift our hands and words as we praise as we praise oh, 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 oh yes you deserve the glory we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we pray your holy name give you your
memory of the name fade away the name of cancer the name of HIV let every other name fade away ha! the name of arthritis fades away let every other name fade away
your name. We worship your name. Your name alone. after me in the name of Jesus we are praying now please we are praying say in the name of Jesus shout it in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone Shabakato Salabariagata. Every force. Every force. Nothing will stop your lifting. This is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus. Set. I pray. Shabakato Salabariagata. Shall be broken. You were the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. In the name of Jesus, say after me, in the name of Jesus, every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight, I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of grace, Kabala Koshabala. Shedavala Navarro to Supra de Galia. Alabaro to Supra de Galia. Every dimension, 
Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life, upon my family, and destroy every planting that is not of God. Lift your voice and pray. Let your fire, the visitation of your fire, the visitation of your fire upon my life, upon my life. Pray. Shake it back at Let your fire fall upon my life. Let your fire bring a separation. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies that are under the yokes of darkness. It's time for the devil to give up. Are we together? Are you ready to shout that name that is above all names? Let me tell you, I want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of God in your life. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name Jesus everywhere. And as you shout that name, the sword of the Lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you. Are we together now? Especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time. I'm ministering deliverance now. Every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life, as you shout this name, may the visitation of that fire. Are you ready now? One. Two, three. I command the fire, the fire of the spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. Hallelujah. I think the ground is good enough. You can bring them. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying now. I'm still praying. Anyone's destiny that is under siege, right now I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people. If it falls on you, your destiny is opening up. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands. May the visitation of fire open destinies now. Shake it katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What yes thou? He said four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside in the name of jesus anyone here shabos sekatos kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three 
that horn, that symbol of authority that has tied your family, that has tied your life, it is uprooted. One, two, three. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Pako seketo shatariata. Empre keteke toka sata. Shabbe keteleke tabata. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness, but then He's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you. The womb is the place where seed is planted. That womb can be anything. A woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase. There are people, a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed. The way it is physically, that's how it is spiritually. You receive the word but it never produces. It's barrenness. You receive finances but it never multiplies. It's barrenness. Lift your hands as I pray. Listen. Many people, many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer. You will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer. Lift your hands. I'm praying now that in the name of Jesus, ah, I tell you, all I see is just fire. That's what I'm seeing. Every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I declare be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Overflow one. I'm seeing three people. I'm praying now. I know because of time we can't let you come in. But I'm seeing three people. Two are ladies. One is a gentleman. This prayer is for you. There is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming. Overflow one on people outside. The Lord is bringing massive deliverance. Barrenness is a dangerous thing. Listen. Whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time. Because it cannot grow it cannot multiply jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of jesus i'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that satan has rendered barren i stand by the anointing of the holy ghost and i decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness. Hallelujah. Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh. I didn't. I'm saying this is. I'm saying I know that Ken is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is. You are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen. You came from. Ah, uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Yes, sir. Cross River, Cross River, Cross River. You yes, sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, you came because of a hunger yes, sir. to truly get an anointing. Yes, but you see, this message I preached was for you. Yes, you heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the Word and direction. But you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing. A new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11
the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy where are they i stretch my hands right now 11 people 11 people scattered inside and outside in the name that is above all names receive that spirit you need it i stir it up from your spirit man i stir it up from your spirit man the grace for prophecy makatos kabarakata sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension i'm praying i don't know why god is moving this way there are people the call of god is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of god is upon your life but tonight as a token the spirit of god is visiting you whether you know it or not lord where are they i stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of god is upon your life for your destiny in the area of the fivefold, I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. hallelujah there is a dangerous spirit our time is up hold on but there is a spirit that i want to rebuke now i just saw written in the air rejection hold on many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you you stand you are watching and an opportunity come rejection is not just a state it's a spirit lift your hands don't pray don't do anything just lift your hands hallelujah that's the instruction the lord is giving me just lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus many of you will be surprised now there are people it's like a yoke i'm seeing like cowries these cowries that they use that's what i'm seeing and in the name of jesus christ as the power of god is smashing that rubbish that's how many people who have been despised been despised the bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you he says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations right now i stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus makos kabara katosh kele katosiata if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside 
I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I asked us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name, every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people, let it be broken at the count of three. One, two, three. I declare those patterns broken now. Those patterns broken now. Those patterns broken now. Those patterns broken now. Hallelujah. The spirit of delay. God is taking delay from someone's life. That's what I'm seeing. God is taking delay. I'm seeing it going. Delay. 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 Not everybody, but I'm seeing God is it will surprise you after this miracle service. The kind of speed that your life will enter. Delay. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was, was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth. You. This one. Come. Quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name, Doris. Doris. Who is Doris? I'm hearing a name, Doris. Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus Yeah? look at me witchcraft I'm stretched the Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you I stretch my hands and I declare I'm seeing an altar catching fire in the name of Jesus Christ I declare it by the Spirit I stretch my hands that's what the Lord is saying I should do I stretch my hands it catches fire now oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him.
Paris. Look at me. Where are you coming from? I'm from Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach is taken from my life. Is taken from my life forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. From, hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that coming? Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. No, don't. I, if, if I pray, most of you is not, it's not that word. You are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see, let me, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch, you see. This touch, just this touch, you see. There is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me is what makes this touch different. You see that? You can, you can have, it's not just a touch, maybe a touch for jamborean no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just, just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as oncological 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 it is the power of god as dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like.
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye